Um, hi, everyone. My name is Peggy. I'm the customer success manager from Choir. And today I will be your host um, for today's webinar. And I'll go ahead and start right away. Uh, for today's webinar, it's for the absolute beginners and for those people who don't know what choir is and um, aren't that familiar with choir. And in today's webinar, I will go through the very basic things about choir. So um, if you're already familiar with choir and has been using choir for a while, um, feel free to stick around with us and hopefully you can learn something new from my demonstration. Okay, so this is the agenda that I will be going through for today's webinar. I will give a quick introduction on um, choir and then I will give a quick tour on our choir's workspace. Then I will guide you step-by-step step on how you can create a list of tasks inside choir. So at this section, I encourage you to follow along with me. And at the last part, um, I will share some insights about the different views that we have in choir. And at the um, last, um, at the end, I will save around five to 10 minutes for you um, and answer the questions that you might have. Okay, so before I get into my demonstration, I would like to uh, spend a little time to talk about what choir is and what our core values are. So what is choir? Choir is a project management software tool that is designed to help team collaborate and manage their project. So you might ask what stands out the most um, for choir among all the other project, ma project management tools out there. It is that we are um, easy to use and we have a simple and clean interface. So you can cut the learning curve when you are onboarding new users or um, new team members um, onto our uh, project management tool. So inside Choir, we offer different, we support different features. Um, at the beginning, we started with a nested task list. And what this is, is you can think of it as a regular task list, but the difference is that it is uh, nested. So you, you can create as many task levels as you like. And we also support different views for Choir for your project, and uh, which includes the board view, the timeline view, and calendar view. So these four views that I have mentioned um, are interchangeable, which means that for the same project that you have, you can change them among these four views and view your project differently for your project members. So right now I will go ahead and switch to um, the Choir workspace and show you how you can create a list of tasks. Okay, so okay, so you will see a uh, empty project on your screen right now. Uh, this is a blank project. Um, okay, uh, when you first sign up for a choir account, you can you will be able to see this view directly, and uh, you can start go ahead and start right away to create tasks um, right away, but. You don't have to go through all the other complicated steps of creating projects or um, organizations. But uh, before that, before I show you how you can create a list of tasks, I want to go ahead and change to the meeting agenda project that I prepared and give you a quick tour on Choir's workspace. So at the left-hand side right here, you will see this gray area. This is what we call the um, sidebar. So um, in this section, it will list out all the uh, projects and organizations that you might have. And um, on the right-hand side, this big section, this is what we call the main panel. And um, when you click on the project and organizations right here, this main panel will change as well. And if you double click like this on a task, um, it will open up the detail panel like this. 
and it will show more information about the task that you see right here. So here in the detail panel, you will see the task name and also who is in charge of the task and also the dates and um, tags and other information. Okay, so I'll go back to the MT project um, to show you how you can create uh, a list of tasks. So I would like to um, set up a scenario for you first. Um, for today's example, I want to be a coordinator for my translation project. And my goal here is to use choir to uh, let the team members, let my translators know that uh, what needs to be done and when the task needs to be finished. So here I will use this project to break my steps down. So as a coordinator, I have four steps in mind, um, which are translate and review, publish and billing. So I can use the task feature to help me do this. So um, by clicking on this blank area right here, I can type in my first task, which is translate. And then I can press enter, then the indicator will jump to the next task. Then I can go ahead and type in review and then enter and publish and then billing. And then I can uh, click on the blank space right here to uh, let it save automatically. So right now you can see that I have already break my project down into four um, steps. But my next goal is to break things down more further. So for example, uh, I would like my translators to know that there are two more works, um, two more articles that need to be translated. And by this, I can use the subtask feature to help me do that. So I can click on this subtask icon right here, and then I can add more another level, which is work number one, then enter, and then work number two. So as I mentioned earlier, in choir, you can create as many levels as you like. So for example, um, for work number one, let's say that the translator missed um, mistranslating uh, line one to line three. So I want to let him know about it. Uh, so I can add another subtask here like this, line one to line three. And as you can see that I have my project coming into form like this right now, but my next goal is to let the translators know that there is a task assigned to him. So I will use the assigning icon right here to assign the task to the person. So you can go ahead and type in the email address right away and choir will send out the um, email notification to him and let him know that the task is assigned to him. Another way is to double click on the task and open up the detail panel. So you can do it, you can assign the task as well right here. And at the uh, side, you can also add dates to the task. So what date does is when you add dates to the task, it will tell, it will let the project member know that um, when the task should start and when it should finish. And also you can add tags to the task. So for my example, if I add marketing, I can use tags to help me categorize and organize my task list. And later on, I can use the um, filter bar right here to help me filter um, a list of tasks um, and also narrow down what I need to see. Yeah, so back to my detail panel. In the detail panel, you can also add a description. So this is um, pretty straightforward. You can add more information here in this area. Also, you can attach um, images and files to the task as well. And down at the bottom, here is the comment area. So here, um, you can ask your project members to comment their project um, task status, or you can hold discussions right here. So everybody can stay on the same page. Yeah, so these are the basic things that I want to cover for um, how you can create a list of tasks. And now I will switch to the meeting agenda project that I've shown you earlier and talk a little bit about um, the different views that we have inquired. 
So um, in this view, you can see that it's a project for meeting the agenda. And right now um, I am the nested task list view. So like I said, I use tasks and subtasks to help me um, list down um, the different meetings that I have for my different teams. So here you can see I have um, previous meeting and the meeting for this week and um, upcoming meeting. And what if I want to track my project's progress in a status, status way? So I can do that by change it, changing my project into board view. So by doing that, I can click on this board icon right here, or I can use the um, keyboard. You can press two on your keyboard. So you can now see that my project is changed to a board view and it is separated into different columns. So each column actually stands for um, different statuses. And in this view, you can also hover between different columns to add more status as you like. You can also customize and edit the percentage for each status. And um, this will help you to um, visualize your uh, project in the project progress in a visual way. So when a task is being done or being picked up by a project member, um, you can drag and drop the task to the uh, certain status like this. So as your project moves forward, you will see that the task will continue to move um, to the right and toward the completed status right here, which means that, okay, my project is on track. And later on, what if I want to track my progress in a timeline manner? I can use the timeline view that we have. Click on this icon right here, or you can, again, um, you can uh, press number three on your keyboard. So now, right now, you can see that my project is changed to a timeline view. Um, here, it will give you a visual idea of how long your project need to um, finish or need to be completed. And when you scroll, you can see the tasks that has dates show up as taskbar in the timeline view. Also on the left-hand side, we will also sh uh, show the tree view. So you the list will still be here. And you can also click on the dots right here. Um, and our timeline view will scroll into the time frame for that task. And also in this view, you can also click on the bar right here to set the, the task, to set the dates directly like this. And okay, the last view that we have is our calendar view. Um, you can click on this icon or you can click on this icon or you can press four on your keyboard. So um, this view is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can use this view to plan out your task or events for your task. And when you hover over the dates, you can see that there is an add icon right here. You can add new task to the project right away. So um, in this calendar view, you can also change to different view modes. So for example, right now I am in the month view, but I want to view my um, calendar in a day view or week view or year view or even the schedule view. So um, Choir is one of the um, very few project management tool that offers the schedule view. So what a schedule view does is, is that we list out the tasks that have dates only. So you will be able to see um, and focus on the tasks that needs to be done um, by a certain date. Yeah, so this is um, all the things that I want to cover for today, today's webinar. I want to keep it short um, and not that overwhelming for our new users. And I will now go and move on to our um, Q&A. So I have a question here. Um, 
my team has four people and three of them are responsible for this task for a task. Um, should I add them as multiple assignees or should I duplicate the task and assign the task separately? So um, it actually depends on how you would like to track the assignees. So if you add multiple assignees to the task, um, any of the assignee can complete the task. So it won't matter who completes the task. But if you want to make sure that each uh, each of the assignees complete the task at least for at least one time, you will be you should um, duplicate the task three times and then assign the task separately. So the next question that we have here is, um, I have I'm the manager of a team and how can I get notified for the work of my team? Okay, so um, if you want to get notified about a task, you can follow the task. And how you can do that is, um, let me change back to the uh, tree view. In the detail panel, you can see that there is an eye icon right here. Um, you can follow the task right here like this. And when you follow a task, you will get notified um, about all the modifications done to that task. So for example, when other people um, change the task name or add more descriptions or um, add comments underneath, you will get notified. Okay. So another question that we have is, I saw the icons for calendar view and timeline view, but I cannot access it. Okay, so um, these both views, calendar view and timeline view are exclusively for the um, professional and higher tiers, but you can always uh, start a trial for um, to test them out for free for one month. So how you can do that is by going to the pricing page and uh, you, you should be able to see a button to start a new trial for your organization. Okay, so that's all the time that we have for today's webinar. And um, we will definitely uh, have an, another one um, in the future. So I hope to see you soon. So have a great day. Bye-bye.